For this project, any category for yarn will work, but I'm using a little more than a half a skein of Karen One Pound in lace. As for tools, a 7mm hook, stitch markers, scissors, and a tape measure. We're using 5 stitches for this project, and they will be as followed. Chain, slip stitch, single crochet, half double crochet, and a double crochet. This tutorial is for a size small, but you can adjust it for your size, and we explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting this dress started, we're first going to grab our category 4 yarn, make a slip knot. We're going to grab our 6mm hook, and we're going to start off by making a chain that goes from your underarm down to your hip. And just as a reference, mine is 10 inches or 25 centimeters. Now that we have our chain, the first row that we're going to do is going to be a really basic row of single crochet. So we're just going to block off this last chain that we made with our thumb. We're going to chain up one extra, and then we're going to go into that loop that we blocked off, or the second chain from the hook, with a single crochet. And then from here, we're going to be going into every chain that we have, just with one single crochet. So let's do a couple together. We're going to insert our hook, yarn over, pull through one yarn over, pull through two, insert your hook into that next chain, we're going to yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. Let's do this one more time into this next chain, insert, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. And then from here, we are just going to be going all the way down with one single crochet into every chain, and then I'll meet you guys back. We now have our first row of single crochet, and every row after this is going to be a row of back loop slip stitches, and that's so that we can get a really pretty ribbing look for this dress. But in order to do that, let's show you guys. For this next row, we're going to be doing an increase. So we're going to chain up two from here, flip our work, and then we're going to skip this second loop that we have right here, the one that's closest to the hook. We're gonna skip this guy and then go into this next chain with a back loop slip stitch. So into this next chain, we're gonna go into that back loop and then we're gonna yarn over through everything and this is a different way than the way that we normally do increases but this way is a lot cleaner also so that you guys don't miss any loops on the ends so that everything <laughs> turns out even but let's do more back loop slip stitches as you guys can see we're back to where our single crochet row is but it's going to be all the same so into this next loop we're going to insert into that back loop we're going to yarn over and pull through everything on the hook let's do this a couple more times insert into that back loop Yarn over, pull through everything on the hook. Insert into the back loop, yarn over, pull through everything. And we're going to keep doing this all the way until we get to the end. And then when we get to the end, we're going to be doing another increase. But I will show you guys how to do that just one more time. We've made our way all the way to the end with our first row of back loop slip stitches. And we're going to increase on this end just like how we increased on the other end. And let's show you guys how to do that. So our increase, just one more time, is going to be a chain out of two. We're going to flip our work. We're going to skip this chain that we have that's closest to our hook. Insert our hook into the back loop of the second chain that we have. Insert, and then we're going to do a back loop slip stitch. So go ahead and yarn over, pull through everything on the hook. And then we're going to continue going back down with back loop slip stitches. And let's actually do this one more time. I'll meet you guys back once we make it to the end. I'll show you guys how to increase one more time, and then we'll talk to you guys about the rest of the dress. We have just made our way all the way back down our next row of back loop slip stitches, and we're going to do another increase. So let's do that together really quick. We're at the end, so we're going to chain out two, flip our work, skip this first chain that's closest to our hook, insert our hook into that second chain, but making sure you're only going into that back loop. We're going to insert, pull through everything that's on the hook, and then continue doing back loop slip stitches all the way down. When you guys make it to the end, we're going to increase on that end again, and then we're going to keep doing this all the way down until we get to the part where we want to start working on our shoulder portion and then we're going to expand from there but just to let you guys know for me this little 
increase section is going to be about four inches or 10 centimeters but please keep in mind that this does stretch quite a bit as well so take that into account when you guys are measuring this out for yourself but i'm actually going to show you guys the other half of the dress that i have just to show you guys what we're working on so this is the other side of the dress that i have i know that this looks a little nuts but it'll all come together i promise but this is the part that we're currently working on this is the part that we did that went from our, our underarm down to our hip and then from here we expanded doing our increases on the ends and then from here this is going to be the solid portion that i just told you guys about this is going to be where i want the shoulder neck portion to start so obviously we went all the way up so that this reaches the tip of our shoulders and then we obviously need the dress to be longer so this is what this portion is all the way down as well but we'll get to this once when well we get to this <laughs> but we're going to keep doing just the expanded portion until you guys have the length that you guys need but really quickly i said that it stretches but let me just show you this stretches <laughs> a lot so keep that in mind and we don't want this to be too loose because this is a body contrast we don't want any parts of it to be a little wonky looking so yeah go ahead and make this solid portion really quick and then i will meet you guys back Alrighty, so this is what I have when I have my 4 inches slash 10 centimeters all finished up. And as you guys can see, you guys wouldn't have this part done yet, but I'm just showing you guys because I know that it'll be a little confusing. But this is what we have so far. It is exactly the same. And now since we're here, we're going to start working on the shoulder portion. And this part is going to be all different. But basically what we're going to do is put this up to ourselves, remembering that this can stretch. So if this seems really small, just stretch it out. But you're going to put this smaller side up to your side. And then this is going to stretch over you going towards your chest. And then from here, we're going to make a chain that reaches from where our hook is up to the middle part of our shoulder. And I already have mine. Mine is a total of, if I can find it. Yeah, mine is a total of five inches or 13 centimeters. So we're just going to make a regular chain from here. So we are at this corner, like I said, and we're just going to make a regular chain. And that chain length is going to depend on you and the length that you guys need to get from here to wherever the top of your shoulder is. Like I said, mine is five inches or 13 centimeters. So we're just going to go in with a very regular chain. And then once we have our chain, I'll meet you guys back. We now have our chain on the end of our, whatever this is, our increase, decrease section. And then once when we get here, we're going to block off that last chain. We're going to chain up one, and then we're gonna go down our chain with a row of slip stitches. So into our first chain or the chain that we blocked off or the second chain from the hook, oh boy. We're going to insert our hook with a slip stitch. So we're just going to go into that loop, yarn over, pull through everything on the hook. Let's do this again. Into the loop after that, yarn over, pull through everything. And then we're going to continue doing slip stitches all the way down our chain. Once we get to this main body portion, we are going to continue doing back loop slip stitches. I'll meet you guys back so that we can do that together. And then we will continue to do the bottom portion of the dress once we get to the bottom. So BRB! and I will meet you guys back. We've made our way down with slip stitches all the way down our chain. And like I said, now we're going to just do more back loop slip stitches into this, I don't know, I guess this chunk that we have. So what we're gonna do is turn our work if we have to, if not, then whatevs. <laughs> and then from here, what we're gonna do is go into the back loops with slip stitches. So we're gonna insert yarn over, pull through everything. And then everything from here is going to be exactly the same. So go ahead and put one slip stitch, one back loop slip stitch, excuse me, into every loop until we get down to the bottom. But don't increase because we're actually going to extend that part as well because the part that we just did was the neck portion and then we're obviously going to need to extend the bottom for the skirt. And actually, right before we continue, I'm going to insert a stitch marker, a specific colored stitch marker, just in this top chain. This actually does nothing. This just reminds me that this is the neck portion instead of the bottom. And I know that the bottom is going to be a little bit longer than the neck, but this is easier to just see instead of having to measure an eyeball. So that's what I'm doing. You guys don't have to if you guys don't have one or if you guys don't want to. It really doesn't matter. 
but thought I'd share a tip with you. But anyways, so from here, we're going to go all the way down doing back loop slip stitches, and then I'll meet you guys back until we get to the last loop so that we can extend the skirt portion. So this is where we're at. We have our chain with slip stitches, and then we went all the way down with back loop slip stitches, and we are all the way at the end. And then once we get here, you guys are going to want to put this up to yourselves again, and then measure out and see how long you want the bottom of the skirt to be. So I went ahead and measured mine out, and I'm going to make a chain of 9 inches or 23 centimeters, but yours can be longer, shorter, whatever you guys want. This is completely up to you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and make that chain, and it's going to be exactly the same way that we did the first one. So once when we're in this last loop, just go ahead and start making your chain, and then I'll meet you guys back, even though I'm sure you guys already know what to do, but I'll meet you guys back anyways. We now have our chain, and this is going to be exactly, exactly the same as the first time we did it. So we're just going to block off this last chain that we made. Chain up one extra, insert your hook into that chain that we blocked off with a slip stitch, or this is going to be the second chain from the hook. And then go ahead and put one slip stitch into every chain, going back down the chain. And then once we make it back to this chunky part, we're going to continue doing back loop slip stitches to continue on with the pattern and then i'll actually meet you guys back once we get to the chunky part once we get to this part right here but even though you guys already know what to do but i'll speak to you guys a little bit more about this dress once we get here we've slip stitched all the way down and we're going to go back into the chunky portion with our back loop slip stitches so insert your hook into this first back loop yarn over pull through everything one more time insert into the back loop Turn over, pull through everything, and that's basically it. And then I'm going to bring out the <laughs> entirety of the other portion of the dress that we have, and then we'll talk about it. So this is what we should have so far. As you guys can see, I'm just bringing out the other portion of the dress just to show you guys, because I know that this is the nuttiest way to make a dress. But this is what we have, like I said. And then from here, we're actually going to just make this portion so the blunt portion all the way up until this middle point and this is where this stitch marker is some of you guys may be able to see it but i'm just going to continue doing this blunt portion until we get to the exact middle mark of the dress and it's going to be simple <laughs> once we get to the middle mark we're basically just going to make the same thing but in reverse so once we get to the middle mark we're going to make another blunt section that is basically duplicated from this first blunt section that we're currently working on and then once we have that we're going to make a little i don't know we've been calling it a chunky section but this little decrease section which i'll show you guys how to decrease for this as well but we're going to make a little decrease section that matches the same the same wow the same amount of loops on this side so go ahead and make this blunt portion first until we get to the middle point i will meet you guys when i get to the middle point and then we'll go from there. I will show you guys how to keep this blunt, even though I'm sure you guys already know it's super duper simple, but I'll show you guys how to do that in the next clip. And then also, since we're doing this until we get to the middle point, sorry, I'm talking so much, but since we're doing this until we get to the middle point, this is actually going to be pretty crucial to the dress. Make sure that you keep putting it up to yourselves every now and then. And when you do put it up to yourself, I cannot stress enough, make sure you stretch it when you do because it's going to be stretched when you wear it. So if you make this a little bit too big, then it'll be kind of scrunched up in areas that you don't want it scrunched up in. So we want this to be tight. So <laughs> now that all that is out of the way, I will continue doing my row of back loop slip stitches all the way down and then surpassing this chunky section onto this little chain that we made for ourselves. And I'll meet you guys back once we get down here so that we can keep this blunt together. And then from here, I'm out of breath. Once we get here, we are going to continue making this blunt portion until we get to the middle point. I will let I will leave you guys alone now. So <laughs> I'll meet you guys back once we get down here. We have made it all the way to the end. We don't have any more loops to go into. So we are going to do the next row together, or at least start the next row together. And that is super easy because we're keeping it blunt. So all we're going to do is chain up one flip our work and then into this first back loop just do a regular slip stitch and that's it we're gonna keep doing 
back loop slip stitches all the way down and then once we reach the other end once we get to the last loop we're just going to chain up one flip our work and then continue doing one back loop slip stitch into every loop that we have and that's basically it and then i'll meet you guys back once when this blunt portion meets the middle <laughs> once we get to the middle of this piece of work and then we'll go from there we have just finished up doing our blunt piece as you guys can see and i do have the other piece here just to show you guys where we're at so we're just going to take a look at one side because the other side would be exactly the same we're just going to compare it and then as you guys can see i have exactly halfway of what i need for this entire body portion and this should come out to exactly mid chest where your belly button is all that good stuff so once we have this we're going to do the exact same thing that we did here but reverse it on the other side so from here you guys don't need to put this up to yourself anymore you're just going to measure out what we have right here and i have three inches or seven centimeters so i'm going to make the same size on this side right here and then once we have this entire chunk we're going to start working on the decrease portion but once we have this chunk we're going to cut and tie and then reattach our yarn into the same spot that we need the decrease section to be in so go ahead and make the exact same thing just double up the size that you currently have cut and tie and then i'll meet you guys back to do this last bit for the body portion now we have this entire solid portion all finished up and then now once we have that we are going to do the same chunky part that we have right here but we're going to be doing it on this side but with decreases so the first thing that you guys have to do before we get started is actually just measure out however many inches, centimeters, however you guys are measuring this, that we have from one end down to the next on this side. So since you guys don't have this first panel yet, let's set this aside. And this is what we're gonna be looking at. So whatever measurement you guys have from the tip of this shoulder portion down to where we stopped doing our increases, you're going to take that measurement and then put your stitch marker into that same measurement that we have on the other side. And then we're going to do the same thing for the bottom portion. Take this measurement, measure it out the other side, and then put in your stitch marker. And then for this first row, it's going to be super easy. We're just going to go in with a regular row of back loop slip stitches. But right before we get started, a really quick tip that I have is we're going to see where we cut our yarn for this previous solid chunk that we just did. And then we're going to keep going from that side because since we end it on this side and then say if we start it on this side for example this will cut up the ribbing pattern that we have just a little bit it'll still look okay if you guys accidentally do it but it would be more seamless if we just kind of went with the flow of the way that the yarn is already going so since my yarn is on this side since we would be here we're going to well we would chain up one flip our work and so now it's on this side and then now we're going to go in with a row of back loop slip stitches from this first stitch marker all the way down to our next stitch marker. Now that we're working our way back down, we're just gonna do our row of regular back loop slip stitches, like I said. So this is the row that we were, or this is the side that we were just in. And then we're gonna pretend that we're going down this way, but we're gonna insert our hook into this first back loop that we have right after our stitch marker so that we can maintain this little chunk that we have on the side. So into this next available loop, we're obviously not going to go into this one because that's the one that the stitch marker's in. Into the next available back loop, we're going to insert our hook, take our yarn, make a slip knot, insert that onto our hook. We're going to pull through and we're just going to chain up one to secure. And then once when we have that, we're going to go in with back loop slip stitches. So into the next available loop, back loop, yarn over, pull through everything. Let's do this again next loop insert into that back loop yarn over pull through everything and we're going to keep doing this until we make our way over to this next stitch marker i'm going to keep going until i get to the last stitch marker that i have right before this stitch marker and then we're going to start decreasing i'll show you guys how to do that once when we get there we've made it all the way next all the way next we've made it all the way down to our next stitch marker with our back loop slip stitches and now we're going to decrease but stay with me because this is going to be a little not confusing maybe just a little annoying so once we get here we're going to chain up one we're going to flip our work and then once we get here into these first two loops we're going to do a decrease and that is going to be regular so we're going to insert into this first back loop yarn over pull through 
insert into this next back loop yarn over and we're just going to pull through everything that's on the hook and then the annoying part is actually that we're not going to be doing this at the beginning and the end of every row so you're going to have to keep track of when you're going to decrease so since we decreased here we're going to put one back loop slip stitch into every loop all the way down all the way down until we have the last loop and we're not going to decrease here once when we chain up one to get to our next row then we're going to decrease again so i'm going to go all the way down with back loop slip stitches all the way down to this very last loop and then i will show you guys what to do just one more time we've done our back loop slip stitches all the way down we don't have any more loops left to go into into this row so we're going to chain up one flip our work and we're going to do another decrease so like i said when we're going when we're working down a row when we're doing our slip stitches down we're not going to do a decrease but the way that i remembered it was that once when we chain up one to start off a next row we're going to do a decrease there and then you're going to do back loop slip stitches all the way down no decrease once when you get to the end chain up one and then decrease and then back loop slip stitches going back back and forth that way and then we're going to keep doing this until we have the same measurement that we have for this chunk that we did in the beginning where we did our increases so where this first row of single crochets was all the way until we get to this solid portion that we have right here we're going to keep doing this until we have the same amount because we need it to be even so really quickly i'm just going to show you guys how to decrease just one more time but we already did our chain up one into this first back loop we're going to insert yarn over pull through into this next loop insert yarn over and we're going to pull through everything on the hook and then once we have that guy we are going to continue doing back loop slip stitches all the way down all the way until we get to the last loop we're going to chain up one do a decrease into those first two back loops and then do back loop slip stitches all the way down and then keep doing that until we have the same measurement and then i'll meet you guys back once we have this done but we are going to make two of these matching pieces but i'll meet you guys back once when i have this one all finished up just to show you guys what it looks like as you guys can see i am already all finished up with doing this decrease section that we just talked about and then i'm pretty much done with one piece i went ahead and cut and tied and this is what everything is looking like and then just to make sure that everything is even if you guys want to y'all can fold it in half and then everything should fold together nicely and then once we have one of these done we're going to do the same exact thing to the other piece as you guys already know we already have a second piece already made but once we have both of our pieces made we're going to be connecting the sides together and then we're going to start working on the bottom detail but in order to connect the sides together the first thing that we have to do is make sure that it is on the right side make sure that the top is with the top as you guys can see i mentioned that i put a specific colored stitch marker on the top just to make sure that it's the top you just want to make sure that it's on the same side and then from there we can just go ahead and sandwich it together and then we'll single crochet each loop together but i'll show you guys how to do that right now now that we're ready to connect our sides together our front and our back piece together we are just going to do a row of single crochet making sure that our hook goes in through the front loop and or the front panel excuse me and the back panel at the same time that way that we can close everything off together and then once we finish up with this blunt section we're going to cut and tie and then do the same thing with the other side so really quickly we're going to insert our hook into the front panel's first blunt side loop that we have and then take a look at the second panel we're going to insert our hook into the first loop that we have here and then we're going to pull through and then now that they are both attached to our yarn we're going to chain up one to secure and then now we're just going to connect together doing a single crochet so into the next available loop into the front panel we're going to insert our hook into this first loop we're going to take a look at our back panel and then we're going to insert our hook into the next available loop that we have on our back panel and then once we have that single crochet like normal let's do this a couple more times together into the next available loop that we have into the next front panel and then into the next available loop that we have into the back panel if i can show you guys and then single crochet and then that's basically it we're just going to keep doing this until we make our way all the way down this little blunt section that we have once we make it to the end we're going to cut and tie and then once we have this side all connected we're going to do the same thing to the other side and then we'll meet you guys back so that we can do the little bottom detail that we're going to have together 
So this is what we have once when we have attached both of our sides, as you guys can see. We have a seam over here, and then also the same seam on the other side. And then at this point, you guys can try this on if you guys want to, just to make sure that everything's fitting right. And then the next thing that we're going to do is work on our bottom detail. We are now ready to start working on the bottom curve detail, just like how we have right here. And it looks a little crazy right now, but it looks a lot better once when it's on. But now we're going to start going in with just regular rows of single crochets and half double crochets until it curves until we can kind of close it off. So the first row that we're going to do is just going to be a regular row of single crochets. So we're going to start into this corner and then we're just going to go straight into every loop that we have. And then once we get to this section, we're going to call these the arches for video sake. Once we get into the arches, there's not going to be any real loops for us to go into. So we're going to have to try to figure it out, but make sure that it's even on both sides. And then we will go from there. So let's do the first row of single crochet together. So we're going to get started with our first row of single crochet. So what we're going to do is find one of the corners, doesn't matter which one, but we're going to insert our hook into that corner, slide our yarn with a slip knot onto our hook. We're going to pull through, chain up one to secure. And then once we have that, we're going to go into every loop. We're not going to be going into the back loops for this first row. We're just going to be going into every loop regularly with a single crochet. So really quickly into the next available loop that we have insert and it's nothing fancy. We're going in through both loops like usual. And then what we're going to do from here is single crochet. And then we're going to do this all the way until we get to the arches. Once we get right here and then you guys can go ahead and figure it out, but I'm just going to meet you guys back just to show you guys where I like to put them in just to make sure that they're a little bit even. So I'll meet you guys back in like two seconds. We are finally at our arch and on this side, there's going to be some not really, but kind of loops for us. So there's actually going to be this first loop that we're going to go into because we're into the last loop of this blunt portion. So into this first prettier loop that we have, we're going to insert our hook into there with a single crochet or wherever. This is just where I like to go in just to make sure that mine are even. And then once when you look in between these two, I don't know what to call these like mounds, there's going to be two loops in between. And I like to put one single crochet into each of those guys as well. So one into this first pretty loop and then one into the second pretty loop in between the two mounds that we have. So let's do this again. This is mound one, mound two. We're going to separate it just a little bit. This is going to be one pretty loop right here and the one pretty loop right here. So insert your hook into that first pretty loop with a single crochet and then into that second pretty loop with another single crochet. And here we're going to keep doing this all the way down, down the other side of the arch and then single crochet some more all the way down the blunt side. And then from there, we're going to be doing some back loop half double crochets but I'll meet you guys back so we can do that together. We have just made our way all the way around with our first row of single crochet around the bottom cutout that we left for ourselves. And then what we're going to do from here is a row of half double crochets. So we're going to chain up two. that counts as a half double crochet. We're going to prepare for a half double crochet and then we're going to go into the back loop so that we have some more ribbing. So into this next available loop, we're going to insert our hook into that back loop, yarn over, pull through, we should have three loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through everything on the hook. Let's do this again. Prepare for a half double crochet. Insert our yarn in through that back loop. We're going to yarn over, pull through, should have three loops, yarn over, pull through everything. And then this part is going to be different for everyone. So we're going to keep doing back loop half double crochets until we get to the end of this blunt portion and then we're going to start decreasing once when we get to the arches but I will meet you guys back once when we have done our back loop half double crochets all the way up until we finish up this blunt portion and then I will talk to you about the decreases once when we get there. Okay so we just made our way down with our row of half loop double crochets all the way until we got to the end of our blunt portion and I'm just showing you like this for now I'll show you guys how to actually do the decreases but we just want to talk about it really quick. Now that we're at our arches, we're going to look at this 
first half first and then it's going to be the same thing for the second half that is directly behind it but we're just going to be looking at this first and then once when we get here we're actually going to just eyeball it this is going to be different for everyone there's not a number count there's not a measurement this is going to be up to you guys but we're going to start decreasing but we're only going to be doing two decreases and then so where i like to decrease is somewhere towards the beginning of this end of our arch and then somewhere towards this end of our arch as well and then that's going to eventually bring all of our work together so that we can eventually just have a straight row and then we can connect it with a row of single crochet from there so it's still going to be back loop half double crochets and then we're oh and then we're also going to be doing other than these two decreases that we're going to have per arch we're also going to have one decrease in the middle as well just to help us decrease this entire section a little bit more so let's do a couple half double crochets and then i'll show you guys how to decrease we'll do the other side together and then i will talk you guys through the rest we are now at our arch like i just showed you and now we're going to do just some decreases in slightly kind of not really random spots onto this archway that we have so let's do this together so now that it's starting to curve i'm just going to go in with a handful of back loop half double crochets until we get a little bit more inward of our arch and then we will do a decrease so i just did a couple and then now i'm going to show you guys how to decrease really quick we're going to prepare for a double crochet or a half double crochet i'm sorry insert our hook into this first back loop yarn over pull through and then we're going to take our hook insert it into the next back loop yarn over pull through we should have four loops on the hook we're going to yarn over pull through everything that's on our hook and then that is our first decrease into this arch section that we have and then from here i'm going to do more half double crochets until we get fairly close to this end that has the seam we're not going to go all the way up until we get to the seam because this is going to be one decrease here but we're going to get to about a quarter of the way to the seam and then we're going to do another decrease, but we are going to stick together for that. We're just going to do a couple more half double crochets until we basically just decide to do a decrease. So let's do a little bit more. Okay, and then so I'm going to show you guys. I'm just about here. This is the seam. This is the midway point until we get to the other side of our arch that we have. And now we're going to do a decrease, and that's going to be the same way that we did the first one. So we're going to prepare for a half double crochet, insert into this first back loop, yarn over, pull through, insert into this next back loop, yarn over, pull through. We should have four loops on the hook. We're going to yarn over, pull through everything on the hook. And then from here, we're going to prepare for another half double crochet and then keep half double crocheting until we get to the loops that's right where the seam is. And then there's going to be one direct middle loop and it doesn't matter if we use that one to start the decrease or end the decrease but just make sure that you s end around there so let's just go all the way up until we get to this loop really quickly we are now at the middle you guys can pick whatever loops you guys want but i'm just going to go into this loop that we have right here so i'm going to prepare for a half double crochet insert into this back loop and then we're going to yarn over pull through insert into the next back loop which just so happens to be my middle loop we're going to yarn over pull through yarn over pull through all four and then from here we can turn our work just a little bit and now we're working along the other side of our arch and we're going to do the exact same thing that we just did on this previous side over here so we're going to do a couple half double crochets inward do a decrease and then do a couple more half double crochets and then do a half double crochet decrease a little bit more towards this end so somewhere around here and then once when we get to the blunt part we're just going to do regular back loop half double crochet so we'll do that together we're going to do a few half double crochets making sure that we're going into the back loops we're going to move inwards just a little bit and then once we get to a good spot we're going to do our decrease so this looks about good for me as you guys can see this is a seam i've done a couple half double crochets and we're going to decrease together so we're going to prepare for a half double crochet insert into that next back loop yarn over pull through into the back loop after that yarn over pull through yarn over pull through everything and then now we're going to do more regular half double crochet 
yeah, more regular back loop half double crochets until we get close to the blunt end. And then we're going to do another decrease. So we're going to stick together for this again. And then I will show you guys how to do half double crochet decreases one last time. And then the row after this is actually going to be exactly the same thing, but with single crochet so that we get a little bit of a different ribbing look than the main body portion of the dress, which is still pretty, but it's just going to be a little bit different. And we're doing just a couple more half double crochets. And this looks about good, this spot. So I'm going to prepare for a half double crochet, insert into this next back loop, yarn over, pull through, into the one after that, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through everything on the hook. And then from here, I will leave you guys. We're going to go down, going into every back loop with a half double crochet. Once we make it to the end, we will do back loop single crochet row with more decreases into the arcs. And I will meet you guys back so we can do that together as well. We made our way all the way down with our row of back loop half double crochets. And now we're going to chain up one. This works our way up to the next row. And now we're going to start by doing back loop single crochet. So all that is, is inserting your hook into the back loop for the next available loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. And we're gonna keep doing back loop single crochets with nothing fancy all the way up until we meet our, ooh, all the way up until we meet our arches. And then we will do the decreases together. This is where we're at. We've done our row of back loop single crochets all the way up until we got to our arches as you guys can see this is where it starts and we're going to do the same thing that we did with the half double crochets but with back loop single crochets instead so into the next few available back loops that we have we're just going to do some regular back loop single crochets until we get just a little inward on our arch and then we're going to do a decrease so i'm in a decent spot so i'm going to insert my hook into that next back loop yarn over pull through insert my hook into the next back loop, yarn over, pull through. We should have three loops on our hook. We're going to yarn over, pull through everything. We've just done our back loop single crochet. And we're going to continue going in with more back loop single crochets until we get really close to that middle seam that we have in the body portion of the dress. And then we're going to do another decrease there and then one decrease into the middle, so right where the seam is. And then we're going to be working our way down the other side of our arches, putting two single crochet decreases back loops in there as well. So I am decently close to the seam. This is where we're at. And then this is the seam right here. So I'm going to insert, yarn over, pull through, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. And then from here, we're going to go towards this seam that we have but we're going to kind of adjust it to where we did our decrease in the previous row so as you guys can see let's look at it this way actually probably be a little bit easier as you guys can see this is where our seam is and then this decrease that we did in the previous row you can see that it's bigger and a little bit more twisted is on one side of the seam so the decrease that we're going to do in this row that we're currently working on is going to be on the other side of the seam and then we're going to keep alternating it like that for every other row because if we keep doing it on one side or if we don't pay attention it's like there would be two decreases on this side one on this side one on this side it just it would be a mess and then one side of your arch would actually be smaller than the other side so that you have to later on adjust which wouldn't be difficult but it would just kind of give you a little bit more of a headache and now that we have that knowledge, we're gonna go in to our next two loops with another decrease and then continue on the pattern from there. So really quickly, let's look at this really quick. This is where the decrease was in the previous row and I left the two loops right before that available so that we can decrease in here. And then that's basically all we're gonna be doing from here on out. So we're going to insert our hook into the next back loop, yarn over, pull through, into the back loop after that, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. And then now we're basically working into this other arch that we have right here. And then we're going to continue on with this pattern. So we're gonna do a couple back loop single crochets together. And then once we get a little inward, we are going to do a decrease. And this looks about good. This is 
where the seam is, and then we just went in by a little bit. We're going to insert, yarn over, pull through, into the next back loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through everything. And do the same thing, a couple more back loop single crochets until we get close to the blunt portion. And as you guys can tell, this is the blunt portion right here. And then once we get pretty close to that, we're going to do another back loop single crochet decrease. So let's do a couple more. And this looks about good. So we're going to insert our hook into this next back loop, yarn over, pull through, into the back loop after that, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through everything. And then once when we get here, we're going to do more back loop single crochets all the way until we get to the end. And then we are going to do a chain up of two that counts as a half double crochet. And then we're going to go down with back loop half double crochets doing the exact same thing that we just did. So back loop half double crochets until we get up to the end of the, uh, the end of the blunt portion, which is about right here. And then we're going to do back loop half double crochets until we get inward a little bit, do a decrease and then do another decrease once we get close to the seam. Sorry, you guys can see that. Do another decrease once we get close to the seam. Do a decrease into the middle right where the seam is and then continue that same pattern on this side. Once we get all the way down, we're going to do back loop single crochet row and we're going to keep alternating like that until we actually don't have any more of these arch rows to go into. And then from there, we'll meet each other back, but we'll go into each row until we have just the same amount of loops that we have right here for this blunt portion. And then I'll meet you guys back. So this is what we have so far now that we've done our rows of single crochet to half double to single to half double. And we did some decreases along the arches that we have right here. The other side looks exactly the same as this side, so I'm not going to show you guys. And then I actually went all the way down until I don't have an arch left. Obviously, you guys can see this is my opening flap that I have still. And then as you can see from this seam all the way up here, it's pretty much all flat. And I also counted to see how many loops I had here right before we got to our first archway. And we just so happened to have a same amount of loops right here. So we are going to leave it like this and then we're just going to single crochet everything together. These are the two side flaps that we have and now we're just going to connect it. One of the tips that I'm going to tell you really quick, even though I'm sure you guys already know, is just make sure that it's on the same side as the seam that we made for the side of the body portion because we want all the seams to be on the same side. And then once we flip it inside out, that's when it'll, you know, be inside out. Anyways, we're going to continue on with connecting it now and it's going to be the same exact way that we connected the body portion. So we're going to insert our hook into this next hoop, into this next loop since our hook is in through this side. We're going to insert in through that corner loop. We're going to yarn over, pull through everything, and then we're going to insert our hook into this next available loop, into the next available loop that we have on the back panel and single crochet if I can. Let's do this together one more time. Into the next available loop in the front panel and then into the next available loop in the back panel and single crochet. And then we're going to keep doing this all the way down. Once we make it to the end, we are going to cut and tie. And then once when we have that done, we are going to do the same exact thing that we have on this side on the other side. So alternating between back loop single crochets and back loop half double crochets while we do two decreases into each arc side, so two on this side and then two on this side, while maintaining just one decrease going all the way down the middle. Once we don't have any more of an arc to go into, go ahead and single crochet all the way down to connect everything, and then we'll be all done with both of these guys, and then we can work on the little shoulder portion that we're gonna have. So I will meet you guys back once when we have both of our sides done. We're now all finished up doing our bottom detail on both sides. So here's one. We turn it a little bit. Here's the second one. And then now we're going to start working on, oh no, the shoulder cuff <laughs> that we have right here. And as you guys can see, I already have one of them done, but we're going to do the next one together, but they're going to be exactly the same on both sides. So we'll get both of them done. But once when we get here, we're actually going to be able to try it on now. And what we're going to do once we try it on is measure out from corner to corner. So from this corner, we're going to measure up and over your shoulder down to this corner. 
And once we have that measurement, we're just going to make a chain that connects from corner to corner. I already went ahead and measured mine out, and mine is a total of 8 inches, or 20 centimeters, from this corner up and over to this corner. So go ahead and insert your hook into one of these corners. I can take this stitch marker out. We're going to insert our hook into that corner and then make a chain that is the length of whatever measurement you guys have. We're going to attach it into this other corner with a slip stitch and then we'll go on from there. We now have our chain and what we're going to do is slip stitch it into this other corner that we have. So we're going to insert it into this corner. We're going to yarn over it and pull through everything on the hook. And then once we have that, we're going to chain up one and cut. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go in with a row of single crochet along the entire armhole that we have. I've turned my work on its side just so that it's easier to see the armhole, but this is what we have so far. It's kind of big, so we're going to go in with a cuff just to tighten it up a little bit. But what we're going to do from here is take a look and see where our seam is into the body portion that we did, I don't know, at some point earlier in the video. And then once we get here, we're going to insert our hook somewhere near the seam. It doesn't need to be directly into it, but somewhere next to it is great. We're going to insert our hook, pull through. We're going to chain up one to secure. And then for this first row, it's just going to be rows of single crochet that goes all the way around our armhole. So let's do the first little bit together because right here we don't have any real holes for us to go into. So we're just going to try to find a hole and insert and then just kind of go all the way around from there. There's going to be some pretty holes as we have <laughs> discovered when we were doing this earlier. There's going to be some pretty holes for us to go into. Go ahead and go into those with single crochets. And then go ahead and make your way all the way around. Once we make it to the end, we are going to connect with a slip stitch. We've just made our way all the way around with our row of single crochet going along the entirety of our armhole and we made it all the way around and we're just going to slip stitch into that first loop that we made for ourselves. So into this first loop, we're going to insert our hook, yarn over, pull through. And then once we get here, we're actually going to take a look at the armhole as it is and then we're going to speak about it just a little bit more before we get going. Before we get started on working on the actual cuff of the side that we're working on right now, we're just going to take a look at this other cuff that I have finished up. And as you guys can see, along the bottom right here, it is a lot smaller than when we get up closer to the tip of the shoulder. And that is because we want this to close in our arm because if we keep everything, the biggest stitch that we got up here was a double crochet, by the way. But if we keep everything as a double crochet, it'll actually kind of tube our shoulder portion out a little bit. And we don't want that. We want this to be as clean as possible. So this part is going to be completely customizable and up to you guys how you guys want to do it but we are all going to start together with a row of single crochet and then we're eventually going to work our way up to half double crochets and then once we get close to the tip of the shoulder we're going to be working in double crochets the way that i eyeballed it you guys can do it differently if you guys want but right where this portion is i guess this is the arm version of the arch that we had on the bottom but right where this portion is, I went from single crochet. Once when I hit just about halfway, I started doing half double crochets. And then once when we hit this blunt portion, this is where I just started to go in with our rows of double crochet just to keep that blunt. And then flip it over, it's the exact same thing. So double crochets, it went up and over your shoulder. And then once when we hit this bent portion or where the arc is, we're gonna do half double crochets and then single crochets. At least that's what I did. You guys can adjust it to whatever you guys want. But with all that being said, now that we know what to do, we're going to do the first row together and then we will have at it from there. So two clips ago, we just slip stitched into this first loop that we had after we finished up our row of single crochets. And now we're about to work on our single crochets to half doubles to doubles, just like how I just mentioned. And right before we get started on doing that, we're going to do a decrease in the beginning. And then also once we work our way around a decrease at the end, and that will also eliminate the tubing that I was talking about. If we were to keep going with just regular loops, we want it to kind of taper in towards our body just a little bit more. So into these first two loops, we're actually going to chain up one first, and these are all going to be into the back loops. So into this first back loop, we're going to insert our hook. 
yarn over, pull through into this next back loop, yarn over, pull through, and then we should have three, yarn over, pull through all three. And that is our decrease on this side. And then once we get here, we're going to eyeball it, do more back loop single crochets until we get to about mid arc, or at least that's what I'm gonna do. And then we're going to switch it up and do half double crochets. So let's stick together for just a minute. I'm gonna do a couple back loop single crochets. Oh, that wasn't a single crochet. There we go. And then let's do a couple more. One, two. And then we're gonna take a look at our arc from where we first started this row. And then this is where the arc ends. This looks just about halfway. So I'm gonna go in with doing back loop half double crochets from the next loop that we're gonna go into all the way up until we get to this blunt portion. So from here, we're going to prepare for a half double crochet, insert into this back loop. We're gonna yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. Let's do that again. Prepare for a half double crochet, insert into this back loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. And we're gonna keep doing this until we get to the blunt portion. And then once we get to the blunt portion, that part's gonna be super easy. We're gonna be going into the back loop still, but those are going to be just regular double crochets. So let's get to that point and then I'll show you guys what to do from there. A couple more. And then this is also just an eyeball as well, because it's not gonna be like a specific loop for the corner. You're just gonna have to use your best judgment. But once we get about here, as you guys can see, this is where the blunt portion is. We're going to prepare for a double crochet, insert into this next back loop with a double crochet. So we're gonna yarn over, pull through one loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Let's do this again. Prepare for a double crochet, insert into the next back loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And then this part we are going to do off camera, but we're basically just gonna go from where this arc is, from where we started. We're gonna do more back loop double crochets all the way up and over your shoulder. And then we're gonna meet together again once when we hit the arc on the other side, and then we're gonna do the rest of this together. We're now on the other side of our shoulder cuff with our row of double crochet and now we are at our arc on this side and now we're just going to do the same thing that we did on the other side but in reverse so we're going to start with half double crochets to single so we basically just want this to get smaller once we get closer to the seam that we have over here so we're going to do a couple of these together we're going to prepare for a half double crochet into this next back loop we're going to do half double crochets until we get to about mid arch and then we're going to switch over to back loop single crochets but we're not going to go all the way down we're going to leave the last two loops so that we can decrease into there as well so let's do just a couple of these guys all back loop half double crochets for now and this looks about right so taking a look at where our arch starts versus where it finishes. We have just these loops left to go into, so I'm gonna switch over to doing back loop single crochets, and then we're gonna go all the way down until we just have two loops left, and then we're going to decrease. So into this next back loop, we're going to do back loop single crochets, all the way down. So close. Just a couple more we're going to leave the last two loops and then we're going to decrease so these are the last two loops that we have right before we reach our seam which is right here which are these two guys we're going to do a decrease into those two so we're going to insert yarn over pull through insert into the next back loop yarn over pull through yarn over pull through all three and we have our decrease on this side and then remember we started with a decrease right here as well and then once we get here we're going to insert our hook into that first loop that we made with a slip stitch so we're going to yarn over pull through everything on the hook and then from here the next few rows are going to be exactly the same so start off with a decrease and then we're going to go in with single crochet to half double and then to double that goes up and over your shoulder and once we get to the other side we're going to do half double single and then decrease at the end connect with a slip stitch and then keep going around just like that until you guys have a cuff size that you guys need and mine is just a little bit over two inches so 
with two inches or five centimeters but that is completely up to you guys depending on how big you guys want yours to be so go ahead and do that and then i'll meet you guys back once when we have this done but once you guys have one of these done do your other cuff and then i'll meet you guys back then we are all finished up with doing both of our shoulder cuffs and the last thing that we're going to do is make a little mock neck for ourselves so the first thing that we're going to have to do is go into the row of single crochet just around this neck hole that we made for ourselves so this part is fairly easy we're just going to insert our hook into any one of these loops it really doesn't matter which one because we're going to make our way around full circle anyways we're going to make a slip knot insert that onto our hook we're going to pull through and chain up one to secure and then we're going to go all the way around with a row of single crochet but for this little chunk that we have in the front and also in the back we're going into our side slip stitches so there's not going to be any real loops for us to go into but really quickly what I like to do is just look for the pretty loops and just put one single crochet into there and that usually evens out for me so let's take a look at this one here's another pretty loop right here insert single crochet take a look here's another pretty loop single crochet and we're going to do this all the way around once we make it to the end we're going to slip stitch into that first loop and then we'll get to working on the mock neck from there so we've now made it all the way around with our row of single crochet and now we're going to start working on the mock neck and that's going to be fairly simple we're first going to put this on and see how long we want the mock neck to be and I'm going to make a chain that is about 4 inches or 10 centimeters. So I'm going to go ahead and make that chain. And then we'll meet you guys back. Once when we have that, we're going to go in with the row of slip stitches. Just like how we did the body portion of the dress. We now have our chain. And what we're going to do next is that row of slip stitches. Just like how I mentioned. So we're going to block off that last chain. Chain up one. And then we're going to insert our hook into that loop that we blocked off. Or the second chain from a hook. And then we're going to yarn over and then we're going to pull through everything on the hook just like that and let's do this together again into this next loop that we have insert your hook we're going to yarn over and then we're going to pull through everything on the hook so basically the same thing that we did for the body portion we're just going to keep doing this all the way down once we make it to the end we're going to connect it into the base with another slip stitch but i'll show you guys how to do that once when we get there We've slip stitched once into every loop that we have going back down our chain and then once when we have this we are right at the base and we are going to connect it into the base with another slip stitch. So what we're going to do is take a look at the base that we have and we're going to count up just one loop. So obviously we're not going to go into this guy because this guy has our chain. So we're going to go into this next available loop that we have and then we're going to insert yarn over with a slip stitch so we're going to pull through everything and then now that row of slip stitches is now connected and then in order to work our way up to the next row we're going to slip stitch just one loop up yarn over pull through flip our work and then we're going to go in with more back loop slip stitches just like how we did the body portion so really quickly into this first back loop we're going to go in with a slip stitch and we're just going to keep going like that. So into every back loop, we're going to put a back loop slip stitch. Once we make it to the end, we're going to chain up one, flip our work, and then do more back loop slip stitches going all the way back down towards the base. And then I'll show you guys how to connect it to the base just one more time. And then we will go from there. We've just made our way down with our next row of back loop slip stitches. And we're just going to show you guys how to connect it into the base just one more time. So into this next available loop that we have, we're going to insert our hook with a slip stitch. So we're going to yarn over, pull through everything and do that one more time. So we can work our way up to the next row, pull through everything, flip our work. And then from here, do back loop slip stitches all the way down. And then we're going to keep doing this around the entirety of our neck hole that we have. And then once we get to this last loop that we have on this side, we're going to connect it with a row of single crochets, just like how we did the side of the dress so i'll meet you guys back once we have all of this done we now have the main portion of our mock neck pretty much all finished up this is what it looks like all the way around we worked away until we didn't have any more loops left to go into and the last thing that we have to do is just connect it with a single crochet to close this off and then we'll basically be all done but right before we do that one thing that we will do is i know that we have 
flipped our work right side out so that we can try it on but we do want our seams to all be on the same side so go ahead and flip it wrong side out again <laughs> and then we're going to make sure that our seams are facing the same way as you can see this is the body portion and this is facing out and we're going to do the same thing that we did here over here so now that everything is the correct way we're going to go in with a single crochet making sure that we go in through the front panel and the back panel now that we're ready what we're going to do is find this first loop we're going to insert our hook not this one right here and then we're going to find the first loop that we have on the back panel which is this one and then once we have that we are going to single crochet them together let's do the next one one more time and then i'll let you guys have at it because it's pretty easy we're going to insert our hook into the next available loop and then into the next available loop that we have on the back panel if my hook can go through there we go and then we're going to single crochet if it'll let me single crochet there we go and then we're going to keep doing this all the way down until we make it to the end we're going to cut and tie and then i'll meet you guys back this is our dress all finished up and we haven't flipped it inside out yet because the last thing that we're going to do is weave in all of our ends and then that's about it go ahead and do that and have at it have fun now that we've woven in our ends we are ready for fall i've been daydreaming about this dress ever since the summer and i'm so happy to share this pattern with you guys i'm dying to remake this in a bunch of different colors but let me know what colors you'd like to see this dress in and also while you're at it go ahead and give this video a thumbs up it's right beneath the video it lets youtube and i know you're enjoying the videos and it goes a really long way with helping the channel grow and gain traction but if you didn't like it, go ahead and give this video a thumbs down, but be sure to leave me a comment letting me know why you didn't like it, or if you have any questions, requests, or if y'all just want to say hi, I usually reply pretty quick. If you love it, do me a huge favor and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, it's right beneath the video. It'll let you know when there's a new video uploaded to the channel, get you a bit more priority when it comes to requests, and it goes a really long way with helping the channel grow so I can keep making all these great videos for you guys. If you're already subscribed, huge thanks to you guys, but please hit that notification bell to know when there's a new video uploaded for you right away, and please share with your crafty friends, or any friends. Every bit helps. Links to the yarn and the hooks will be in the description, and if you guys buy something using those links, that also goes towards helping out the channel. And lastly guys, Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest links are down there as well. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see y'all in the next one.